I started uh, wood carving in 1986 uh, with the Northern Virginia Carvers and um, loved it. Just uh, did everything. I mean, I whatever whatever they were teaching, whatever came along, whatever projects. I, I tried chip carving, relief carving, just everything. It was a big club. I had about 200 members when I started. Um, and then in 2002, uh, I went to the John C. Campbell Folk School and took wood turning. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. Came home, bought a lathe. Actually, Jeff gave me my first lathe. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I forget Forgot what it was, it. but yeah. uh, I don't That's think I ever. Uh, was it a se something serious or something? Serious or something. But um, anyway, I, I actually passed it on to someone else <laughs> pretty quickly and uh, bought a Nova 3000 DVR. So for those of you who know that, it doesn't have any belts, direct drive, digital. Uh, for me, it's wonderful because I'm not, I, you know, I never took shop when I was in high school. I had to take sewing and cooking and oh, I would have loved to take shop. But, um, so I don't really have a background in anything mechanical. I'm not a woodworker at all. Um, so it's making jigs and things like that are hard for me. I tend to just go buy it or buy it from somebody else if they've made it. Um, but uh, I joined the Capital Area Wood Turners and um, the idea was that I would start carving on my wood turning. But actually what happens is when I, when I turn something, you know, I get a bowl and then the idea of carving on it is like the outside surface. I'm just <laughs> I'm just not brave enough, you know. I have done a few uh, carvings, um, and they worked really well, but um, I just, so I, I tend to do more burning. And um, when I do a bowl, somehow I just look at it, I think it's wonderful, nice shape, all that, but then it's just not me until I do something else to it. Cool. So, and I don't necessarily know ahead of time what I'm going to do. I'll first just do my bowls, get the shape I want, you know, and then I look at it for a while and and kind of decide. And uh, the first uh, bowl that I actually, I think this was the first bowl I actually um, wood burned on. This was a wedding present my, for my parents, 64 years of marriage. and. Um, I, I was again. I didn't want to ruin the outside of it. There was just something about it, and um, so I got the idea that I could burn. I, I did this by making a little tiny heart template. Tried different sizes. You cut them out of butter tops, and then um, and another thing I do that I do. I don't. Um, I don't use an indexer. I have an indexer on my lathe, but I don't know. I uh, you, did any of you know John Knopfinger? Yeah, have you ever seen his demonstrations? Well, um, I kind of do it the way he does, which is, you know, I I pick a point here and then here and then here and then here, and I just keep going around, dividing that in half until I've got what I want and. I kind of like it. I always heard the Navajos put some little mistake, or if a mistake is there, it's okay because it's handmade and uh, things okay, don't. That's the evil spirit out is, of your work. Is that what it is? <laughs> oh, okay, well, because things don't have to be perfect. Um, Are you so, saying that you do this on the lathe? No, I do not do it on the lathe. Oh. I, I, when I, I do my turnings, I do all the sandings, everything except finishing. And then I look at the bowl and decide what I'm going to do with it. Mm. And um, because of that, I don't finish on the lathe. But I, I tend not to finish too much on the lathe anyway, uh, unless I'm doing a pen or, you know, a bottle stopper or something. Um, so anyway, that's that's how I did this. Now, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, I, I do want to just talk about these, these birds because this is how I learned to do wood turning. Um, these I did under a teacher, um, Ray Stansel, uh, who's, he was in Fairfax or Springfield, now he's moved to Nashville. Um, 
but I was actually going to buy a bird like this one from him, and I kept looking at it and decided if I wanted to spend three hundred dollars for it. Mm -hmm. And then he told me that he could teach me to do it, and it would cost me two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, and I said my problem is is I'm a I'm a very slow carver and a very slow turner too. So um, I said, well, I can't come and do a class and you know be done in eight days. That's how most most carving classes go. You're supposed to be all finished. Um, I said, I know I won't be finished, and then I'll be stuck with something half done and not know what to do. So he said, no, you just come every Saturday, and then as long as it takes you, you can just, he said, I'm always carving on Saturday, so just come every Saturday and we'll just sit there. I'll do one alongside you, so, you know, we'll just work along on it. Well, the first one, the hen took me two years. <laughs> yeah. And the second one, the second one, I said, okay, well, now I want to do a drake. And he said, well, there's got to be some more students in the class, and it's going to be eight weeks this time, and we're going to, eight weeks of Saturday, we're going to be done. Okay, okay. I found two other people who were willing to do uh, green wing teal drake. And, um, it only took a year and a half. <laughs> but the other students took the same amount of time too, so I didn't I didn't really feel bad. If you know well you don't know Ray, but he's a big talker, so we, we had a lot of distractions and uh, anyway, but that doing these birds taught me a lot about not only about carving but about burning because all this detail is burned first. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, and then painting also. Mm -hmm. And I I don't do a lot of painting, but he taught me all of that. Okay, um, I also have some, I don't know, oh, yeah, I have some samples. Well, that's not what it should be. This is supposed to be a loop of samples of my work, but it doesn't look like it's doing that, so I'll fool with that later. Um, first, I want to talk about safety, which um, yeah. I'm sure you all know about, but it's good to just mention it. Of course, fire extinguishers. Um, when you're burning, it's good to have some ventilation. Um, I have a, a, a dust collector that's one of the portable ones. It's about that big. Our use, I have one of those too. The thing is, they're so noisy, but you just have to put up with that. So when I, when I burn, I have this dust collector on and it's pulling the smoke away. Um, I was also told that you can, um, there used to be little ashtrays they, sh they sold from time to time mm -hmm. that, you know, pulled smoke. I, I haven't seen them, but maybe you can get those somewhere. Just something that sort of pulls, or a fan, something to blow the smoke away, because it will, uh, it can bother you, and it depends on what kind of wood it is. Uh, there can be hot spots in pins. Uh, I don't know what this stuff is called, if anybody knows. Um, I bought it from a, uh, a wood, a wood turner, I mean a wood burn, oh, he was a demonstrator, Kepler wood turners, and he was selling this. He said it was the only thing he had found that, that helped with, uh, the heat, um, mm. and it came in a big roll, so he was selling it, uh, two, I think, for a dollar, and, uh, I probably should have bought more, but, anyway, something that, that if you're going to burn a long time, yeah. this can get hot. Um, I was also, um, if we have time, I brought my power carvers. Um, I have several and um, uh, some coloring things if you want to get into color uh, that I can can talk about. Um, so if you're, you know, there's things like using bleach. I don't know if you can tell on this little rabbit, but I bleached a little white tail um, in the in the back. I thought about burning around it, but I decided not to. But it's I haven't used bleach too much. But if you use bleach, you need to have neutralizer handy with a vinegar. Um, if you're using wearing doing power tools, you should have a leather apron um, because that those things can get away from you. Uh, just, you know, if you hit your bit. And maybe even if you're carving in your hand, you're holding something, it might be a good idea to use a leather, a leather glove. Okay, um, burning tools. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about what I, what I have. Uh, I have a coal wood, which is this one. 
I think the cub is also a cold wood, if I'm not correct. But um, I like this a lot. I bought it from my my uh, duck carving teacher. Uh, Do anybody know John Knopfsinger? I think he, um, he used to have ties out in this area, I thought, but maybe not. Um, Somebody named for this area. Um, is it? Yeah, Knopfsinger. Yeah, I think his, I think his yeah. father lived out here. Anyway, he, he is a very good uh, wood turner and um, artist, and he, he, he has, or used to have things out at the Waynesboro um, Art, was it, uh, Center, Artisan Center, mm -hmm. Virginia, he had yeah. his work out there. Um, so he's taught, I've ta taken some courses from him, um, and he now is selling coal woods. Uh, I brought, I only have ten of these, but I, I can get more to, to if you want. This is a handout that lists the different kind of burners that I'm aware of and power carvers and some information. So if, um, you know, I don't want to pass those around. Wayne should put that over there. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, there's no <coughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, I also use a Navarro. Now this is not available, but if you ever saw one at a flea market or something, I would. I think they're wonderful. Um, Jeff said he had one. Um, they were sold by a woman that was in the, they're from Mexico, and they're no longer made, but um, it's an interesting kind of burner. It uses more branding, although it does have tips for doing drawing kind of wood turning. But a lot of what I do, um, like this bowl, I tend to do a lot of things like this now. Um, and I work out a design. This my favorite piece of wood that I I uh, work out all kinds of designs on. Mm -hmm. I can pass these around if you want. And um, it just shows the, uh, the kinds of things you can do with this, this uh, little Navarro. It has more branding type tips where you're going straight in. And it has a short handle, so it allows me to get inside bowls. Uh, whereas this one, to do the brand, you really have to go straight on. Wait, I got two. Um, okay, uh, Burn Master, I don't, is another one, Razor Tip. Uh, I believe that Razor Tip might allow you to design your own tips, in which case you could make the branding type. Tips, um, but I haven't used it myself. Uh, you would just have to investigate that. Um, for you need something to hold your work. Um, I have a holding. I have a uh, tool post that goes on my. I actually brought it, but um, I didn't get it out. But, um, this is a very expensive thing I bought, which I've hardly ever used, <laughs> because this would allow you to do something on your leg. Um, That'll hold the chuck. This will, yes, this will hold the chuck. And uh, I know John Nossinger, that's why I bought it, because he really recommended it uh, when I was first starting out. And uh, yeah, it goes right into your tool rest. And then you can oh, do, <clears throat> do something. Do you want me to pass these things around or not? Yeah. Or what's the best? Yeah. Roger, you want to put this list on the Pass it around. Pass it around. Wayne. Wayne is. I have some newsletter, yeah. Okay. What I use for a holding tool, tool uh, is, <laughs> is this. Um, just sand, right. And I usually sit down and I'll put this in my lap and then it gives me something. Um, as you can see, it's just a tote bag and I filled it up and then I just stitched it by hand back and forth a lot until I felt it was tight. So um, that that works pretty well for me. Uh, okay, preparation of the piece. Uh, it has to be fully, uh, not finished, but it has to be fully sanded in order to burn on it. So you go through all your, your uh, grits. You can't count on burning to remove tool marks. 
although sometimes you can get away with it, but for the most part, uh, I, I was not. Um, uh, the kinds of wood, uh, I use very hard, close-grained wood, um, maple cherry walnut. I have burned on um, ash, which was very hard, because uh, you know, your pin is going to sink in um, yeah. to the softer areas. So oak, ash, and I'm not sure about poplar, but uh, I have a question up there about poplar. Where are you going? Duck, do um, So how do you work out a design? Um, I don't know. I just uh, <laughs> I use I use all these boards. The one that's going around. Um, this is a good way to start out if you're going into wood burning. You make up a grid and you um, you try all different kinds of designs. And um, I have some books that I brought. If you want to look at them, they're good good books. Um, they're uh, Actually, I buy books and I don't always read them. I kind of look through them. And, you know, I, I want to be doing rather than, rather than reading. But uh, they'll, they'll give you some ideas. Um, but generally, I will uh, look at my tips and kind of what they can do um, uh, and, and just play with them until I kind of start getting... Um, Getting different ideas. Those are basically drawn each one individually, then, right? I mean, or is it a stamp where you? No, no. I've, I've done each one individually. individually yeah. Right. This bowl. When I was working on this bowl, mm -hmm. I didn't turn this bowl. Uh, it was given to me to do it's chip carving on, and it wasn't really suitable for chip carving. It had this big knot in it. I wasn't quite sure. I hang around, hung around my shop for years, and then finally, it had a sharp edge here but it had a soft edge here. And I just, you know, so it took me a while to figure out that's what bothered me about it. So I sanded that off, curved that. I did that all by hand. I didn't put it back on the leg or anything. I just uh, uh, did that with sanding. And then uh, I worked out, the, I've always liked swirls, spirals. They've always attracted me. So I worked out, I took this and I just worked out all different kinds of patterns to see what I like best and, um, and then came up with this one. This is colored with um, oil pencils so that's how I oh, that's how I work. Now, if you take colored pencils and then burn on top of it, does it burn that color into the wood? It is, or do you Not, burn it and then color it with a pencil? I uh, burn it and then color. I think color and, and the, right. Uh, and if and then after that, these are oil pencils, not colored pencils. So uh, and I usually finish with oil. So then what I did is I took shellac and carefully with a tiny brush painted over all the color, and then and then I could just finish it with no problem. Okay. Um, Okay. So uh, after after you're all done burning, it's still bare wood. Uh, you say you put shellac on only on the color part, right? And then treat it as if we do, you know, any kind of finish, or or do we have to worry about? Not washing things out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I just put the oil finish. I use Watco. I just put it right on top of the um, shellac. That doesn't bleed. Shellac stays in. It really seals it. It really seals it. Yeah, just don't use the finish with with alcohol base because the alcohol can dissolve shellac. That's right. On, on this, on this right here. Yeah. You have these little leaves. Yes. Now, is that something that you just like, uh, like a uh, uh, branding iron yes. that you branded brand, yes. on there? That was yeah. using uh, this one, and um, 
But she has different tips for the iron. So you can make your own shape, branding iron shape? Well, I don't think I can because um, here's some of my tips. Yeah, you can pass these around. Oh, these are some of my tips. Uh, but I don't know how to attach. I mean, yeah, these are already like a lot of shapes that you've got here. Right, for you. right. I wouldn't mess. I mean, maybe somebody else could. I couldn't uh, do it. If, you, if you've done any kind of uh, metal work, uh, hammered type work with copper, uh, you can make your tip as to whatever you want it to be uh, and hook it on. It depends on the. I don't know whether it would work on these particular burners or not, but uh, they do sell the. The, the stuff to make tips yes, with. It's a nickel. Roger. Oh, nichrome wire. What is it? Nichrome. Nichrome. Yeah, nichrome. Nickel. Yeah, you can use yeah. nichrome or you Bruce. can use copper or you Write can use this. Down they have a right. dozen different ones. Well, sorry. Use. Light them down, if you will. Yeah, nichrome. Yeah, and we can get them for the club. Joyce, okay. you, you said the bird. The, the burning that you add color to, yeah. you use yeah. oil, pencil. Well, it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can also use uh, you can you can also use dyes, and I'll probably talk about that later if we get to that point. But um, okay. These all work with your cold wood burner. These these steps will work work with your cold wood. No. I don't know. They will not work in the cold wood. I don't, they're, uh, I don't think they will. So what, yeah. Which, which burner does this work with? This work with this Navarro. Okay, thank you. But it gives you an idea of what yeah. kinds of, if you make your own, what, what you can There's do. There's no longer available. Right. And I also brought these. Now this, these are, I did not do these, but these are from Turkey or maybe Romania, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, someone that I worked with gave me these because they you know, they were just downsizing they knew that I uh, kind of like to do this kind of thing so uh, I brought these because this actually is probably done with this type of burner um, you can see all the little shapes that are used um, and the color and also when you burn and then the color especially if you're using a dye the burning will hold your color so it doesn't bleed if the burn deep enough. But um, that's why some people burn. Um, it just sort of seals it. And, and uh, Except that if you're working on end grain, I did a little bowl. It was a natural edge bowl, kind of this shape. And I wanted to put little hearts around it. It was Valentine's. I was going to somebody's house for dinner. So I made a little, well, I had my little heart uh, template. So I made these little hearts on the outside and then, you know, took a little red dye and put it on. And um, it was an aniline dye. Of course, it bled right through. No. So then I took the little heart and went all around the inside. <laughs> Did the same thing. So uh, it you're saying a template, you're just drawing around it and then tracing it with the burning yes. pan? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I do for the hearts. Joyce, when you do the, your designs around the rim of the bowl, do you put a reference line around it or you just yes. freehand it all the way around? Yes. Uh, this is the bowl I'm going to try to burn for you today. And you can, don't rub my, my pencil marks off. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you'll oh, see pretty. what I've, what I've done. I, I do. And again, I just, um, I take a pencil. And I just hold it, and I just go around, and then I make it a little deeper, and I go around again. I mean, I, um, you know, so it might not be totally even. Um, I'm just not that exacting kind of person. Um, so, um, okay, sample. Oh, I also use a, I've tried using a flexible curve. I don't think I brought it. I meant to bring it, but you probably know it. I think it's called a French, French curve. curve or, yeah. Right. I think I did it, um, I think I did it with this one because one thing about these designs, after I work this design out on a board, then I've got to figure out how it's going to fit yeah. in here. That's always the big 
is it going to work or not? And I try to measure mm, yeah, sure. what my design is and then how much room I have and how many it's going to take of that little motif to fit in. And um, so far it's always worked, but <laughs> I'm not sure. I just kind of, I just kind of do it. Um, okay. Um, when you're going to burn, you should try to have a piece of wood of the same type, or maybe actually it's from the same, you know, a cutoff. I don't always have that, like the one I'm passing around that I'm going to do today. I don't. I, somebody gave me a blank. It was already cut out. I didn't have anything else. I'm not sure what the wood is. Um, so I just have to sort of wing it and test it on something else. Um, it's pretty hard, so I probably, you know, said, I thought it was cherry. Maybe it's something else. We don't want to turn the um, So, um, you know, different heats for different woods. Once you start burning on your piece, and you have it at a certain setting. You know, these burners have, you know, most of them have settings. Once you start burning and you get it at that setting, you don't want to move it. Um, you, you know, so if you stop and start, you know, maybe don't pick up till the next day, you want to try to keep that setting right there. Otherwise, all of a sudden you might be burning too dark. Can I ask a question right here? Yeah. Uh, related, is, is there a kind of general rule of thumb as it relates to density of wood? Does that, as it, it's, it's more dense, does it require more heat, less heat, less heat, or is it opposite, or, or do you have a, a gauge on that? Cool. I haven't really thought about that. Um, I mean, the density. Um, I, I just try it on another board. I mean, something similar. Similar wood, though? Similar wood, right. Um, and try to get, try to get, I mean, you don't want to overburn, mm -hmm. you don't want to underburn. When I learned to burn, the first teacher I had said, you really only have one shot at it, and you can't go back in your lines very successfully. But I, I have found that's not true. I, I have gone back over things. The, the branding is a little more difficult because you're going, it's hard to hit that same spot. But even there, I mean, you do what you have to do. And uh, uh, so if you do, um, you know, the end grain and the side grain burn differently. Um, and if you have corrections or changes, then you either sand it out. Um, you can try slicing with a very sharp knife, depending on what the wood is and the direction of the grain. Uh, or you can try grinding with a, a power tool. I did have a, a, a small bowl that was, and I, it, it was kind of like, it was a, a barrel like this one, very similar. And after I did it, it was, it was kind of thick. And I liked it. It was uh, it was exactly this shape without the without the uh, base. And I had burned this little um, sort of swivel pattern on it, which is like this. I don't know if you can see this. See that? Well, so uh, I I had done it, and I wasn't happy with it. Um, so the piece of wood was thick. I ended up taking my Fordham and grinding it all mm -hmm. off, which actually improved the shape <laughs> of the bowl. Of course, then I had to do all my sanding all over again and everything, and then I and then I reburned it. Now some people would criticize me because they felt that something that was so figured um, didn't need burning. Um, but I took that bowl to the um, uh, symposium in um, San Jose last year, yeah. and I did put it on the. We had this instant critique. Well, what was it called? It was a critique where you could put your name right, on, right, and you right. had a certain place. And they, yeah. So then um, the guy, what's his name, Nitzman, Nit, Nitzman. So he was my critiquer, and there was mm -hmm. a bunch of us who were following him around and everything. Well, he loved it. I mean, he just thought that the burning. Even though the piece was figured, 
um, he really liked the way it added something. It kind of drew you in, and and so I, you know, other people thought I had ruined it. You know, people, some of my fellow CAW members, and so it's so just you what know, it's a, know? Yeah, it's a matter of just it's just a matter of taste. I sort of do what what I like, and uh, sometimes I have to look at it for a long time before I make a decision. Uh, Okay, I've already talked about resources, um, where to get ideas, you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, just, there's all kinds of, you know, art patterns, Celtic patterns, nature patterns, leaves. Yeah, uh, these things just plug into a regular outlet. One ten. Uh, yeah, just a regular bolt. bolt. Okay. You said you don't want to overburn or underburn. How, what's overburning? Underburning, Over, you wouldn't see it. Overburning. Um, let me see. But well, it's like well done. Right. All right. If you look at this piece, this was a pattern I was working out. Um, and if you see, and I actually like the overburning on this. So sometimes you might want overburning. Um, just for the effect that it gives, because it kind of colors. Yeah. The just colors. moving the tip slowly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this was this was a, this okay. is a branding one that I used. Yeah. I wasn't moving no. that, but it was but uh, was burning hot and. Um, yeah. Uh, I had one of those that I overburned. That was in some woods. To follow an exact small line won't work because yeah. it will the grain. Grain will go. I know. Yeah. It's really so you have to you have to know your woods and you have to experiment, right? You just have to experiment. Just go for it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna try something that they have never done before. <laughs> and that's gonna be to freehand yeah. this little design inside here. Uh, it's much safer to do the branding because I can control it, but uh, I couldn't, this was so little, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a design that I thought was delicate enough. Well, you could have Hank hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Until he passes out. Yeah, yes, yeah. Somebody well, else. so I'm going to actually see how I can take the pass out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let me, um, Oh, and then when I finish it, I'll just go ahead and say this. When I finish, I use Watco or sometimes general salad oil bowl finish. Um, I do use the Beal buffing system, yeah. but you have to be yep. careful about doing it. Like if I'm doing it on this, I try not to do it here. I probably I don't. I would I skip the white diamond. Um, oh, yeah. Because it'll fill in and be hard to get it out, but I but I do go in and just All right. try not to hit. The I mean, you, could do the, you could do the wax part. Yeah. I have a yeah. question for you. Uh, I'm sure you probably uh, most everybody that's did a fire or seen Gibson's work, Michael and Cynthia's teapots. Oh yeah. Uh, um, when you do a large section that's uh, pyro, uh, it leaves a crust. You know, if, you, if it's dense. Uh, pattern or something leaves a crust. Do you just is it, you take a brush, stiff brush or something, and, and, and before you ever put the finish on it, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Do you leave the whole crust on there? It, 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 I'm not sure. I don't know what you mean by crust. Uh, um, uh, you mean it's like the, the, the tar or the, the something? The char, yeah, the char. Do you leave all that, or do you brush any of that back uh, with a bristle well, brush? Well, I anything? do bring. I mean, in my little kit here, I do. I do keep a toothbrush. a toothbrush, sure. uh, and I'm. I haven't used it in a long time, but that may have been what I brought it for. Well, I use uh, it every morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I generally don't burn that deeply or that hot, but uh, I know people that do. Um, so now, I mean, this piece is this um, this black. I mean, it's just a stipple. Um, but I don't, I don't remember it, it having that problem. So, so but yeah, I, I think if there is something like that, yeah, I would do that. Another thing when you're burning, um, it's good to have a, uh, a, a 
sandpaper block, something like this, or just a piece of sandpaper there, where you can sharpen and it, uh, and then get rid of the char. That's the biggest problem is that so you get the char the on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so you want to, right? I mean, some people want their tips very sharp. Yeah. You can sharpen them, and then you kind of can clean them. So. Uh, I probably should do that more often than I do. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe Roger is uh, referring to is do you sand the burned part on the wood or burnish it or do something to get rid of the, the burned residue or you, you're so good you don't have that problem? Well, I have not to sand. That I, I, don't, I don't usually sand it. Um, oh, you're talking about if it's charred? Yes. Um, Oh, I just, generally, just the resi the residue from I generally, uh, when I worked out my pattern on another piece of wood, a similar wood, and I've got it at the heat that I think it's going to be, yeah. um, then I get it to where I'm not, I'm not going to have char. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've already adjusted everything to where I think it's going to be right. And your very first, you know, one that you do, you try, you know, try to do it really lightly. Um, you so you might even, put your name on the you just you put could your even, name on the bottom first. Right, although and every all that, every you, tip though is going to be different. Wow. Um, yeah. And another thing is when you're burning, your pen is cooling off as you're actually burning, and then you stop and hold it; it's getting hotter again. So. Um, you know, you have all these variations. It's just not very exact. Um, but you just just kind of do it. But I, I would say burn lighter. If you're having too much char, then just try turning it down. And uh, uh, okay, let's see. I think I should probably start burning. I have uh, a fan back here. Where I have. <coughs> Ventilator up there. Which would you prefer? That's probably noisy, isn't it? Well, let's yep. see how it goes. Maybe, uh, maybe okay. I won't it be too much. Do you have a sprinkler system, Hank? No. <laughs> <laughs> I pointed out where the fire extinguishers were. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke the sprinkler system to come on halfway through. Another thing with burning is like chip carving. You should you should practice. I mean, if you have an opportunity to take a class, uh, do any of you know um, Nate Johnson at. Um, Springfield Woodcraft. Yeah, he teaches a, at uh, he, Leesburg. Also. Oh, does he teach? He so. is excellent. Now he uses um, a pen. He doesn't use a pen like this. He uses, I don't think, he uses, um, it's more like one of those toy wood burning pencils. Yeah, I think. Single point, oh. Yeah, and it has a lot of different points, mm -hmm. but, um, but they're solid. Mm -hmm. But he does beautiful, beautiful work. Um, so I th this was done. I took a class from him, and I I, I did this. Um, it just he's he's it's just sort of a good. That's very similar though to the uh, the pistol grip type soldering gun that we used all the time in electronics. You know, it's got the two coming down to the tip mm -hmm. on the end. I mean, it's just a lot smaller version of the same thing. Right. I don't know what voltage that is. Obviously, low when the chalk on it or anything, but. You know, um, it's the same principle, a smaller scale, looks like. Right. Okay. Um, I know when I was uh, when I was teaching uh, shop class in middle school, and I'd get the wood burners out, and you, you have to beat them off with a stick, because every every kid wanted to put their name on their project with this this a single point, like you said. Uh huh. You know, they itch it on there somehow, and uh, they loved it. Another nice thing about this little thing is that it, um, when you turn it on and then you turn it off, it cools down incredibly quickly. You can actually just wait a few seconds or maybe 15 seconds and then pull the tip out. Whereas these, you have to have a, a tool to pull the tip out. Um, let's see. 
I just want to give you an idea of these different tips. This one has a, a high and a low. I never, I try never to move this, this temperature gauge here because the electronics in this is not very good. Hey, hey, could, could you move that camera just swing it towards her? Look, look at the screen out there and swing it towards her just a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, there we go. There we go. Is that a camera? That's better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, that is too mm -hmm. That is too You're fine. Yeah. Am I in there? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is a little tiny tip. Now, this is getting some overburn. But this is a little oh, tiny tip. Moving this pretty fast with it. Well, yeah, you have to. Yeah. This is a um, this is a little tiny wire. This tip. But then, can you see that? Go hold that. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you can see how hot that is. I don't. I don't want to. Well, let me try it on the lower setting. Do you buy all that stuff off the off the internet, or is there a local vendor supply? This particular one. I this mean, yeah. oh. in general. They don't um, make that anymore. Yeah, this one they don't make. But yeah, the other, but the other the other stuff. I generally buy it from. I've always bought it from somebody I know, um, and I think on that list I sent around, um, John Knopfinger selling cold wood. Uh, there's a woman in um, Capillary Wood Turners, Amy. Um, I think I have her name on there. She's selling burn, um, is it burn master? Mm -hmm. um, and you can, I think I put a, an email address or a website or something that you can contact her. Mm -hmm. I generally, <coughs> um, for me it's hard to, to buy over the internet because I can't see it. I, I want to really see. Yeah. You look at pictures and yeah. I just don't yeah. get a clear idea of of what it's going to be like. Well, they, so, they got it in the catalogs. I know. In the wood turning catalogs. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I just like to... Carver catalogs. I just like to see it. Yeah, so, carving catalogs have yeah. a lot of burning... Hmm. Burning... Uh, yeah. So, okay, I'm going to see how... This is at a lower heating now, and I think it's... It's not getting as hot. You have to be less added to do this? <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they got right-handed clubs too. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, exactly. Right that right-handed clubs yeah. are more creative. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it might be like yeah, a right side. Right. So, so with right. this lower heat, you have to go a lot more slowly. Yeah. To get in, it's very light. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's what you want at times. Peter gave me a little fan, which comes out of a. Uh, Computer. Electronic equipment, very to, just so it blows away from you. I thought about getting one of those. Yeah. Yeah, just to, to yeah. hold it. You get used um, to it. Okay. Getting old computers. Old oh, computer. You can just pull that right out. Yeah. Just a few mm -hmm. minutes. I use that. Um, Jeff, do you have all those yeah. tips? A lot of them, yeah. Out of computer parts. You're getting yeah, much closer to getting a sander. You're getting much closer to getting a sander. Jeff, do you want a tip? A little tree here. Yeah. I'm going to give Jeff a tip. <laughs> so, I mean, if you have these tips, then you just kind of, you know, play around with them and see. Um, you want to do that in your lap? You want what to sit looks, down? What looks good? Can you see it? That's good. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how. Um, just little lines can make such a, a difference. You have to take a pattern out of a book.